let's talk about the abdominal wall so basically there are two main muscles that you have to remember which is on the front which is called rectus abdominis okay and there is another muscle which is called which is called quadratus lumborum so basically uh, two main muscles of the abdominal wall are the rectus abdominis which is on the anterior side this is the one rectus abdominis and the quadratus lumborum which is on the posterior side okay and the remaining abdominal wall consists of three muscular layers you can have a look three muscular layers here uh, each muscle passes from the lateral aspect of the quadratus lumbar okay we'll have a look at the picture later which where we will see that uh, we have uh, these muscles these three muscles which comes out from the lateral aspect of the quadratus lumbar on the posterior side of the abdominal wall okay uh, so uh, that comes out from the posterior aspect uh, to the lateral mar margin of the rectus sheath so basically they come out from the posterior side okay the quadratus lumborum comes out posteriorly and on the front it attaches to the lateral margin of the rectus sheath this is the rectus sheath okay and you can see that it attaches to the lateral these three muscles coming from posterior side is now attaching with the uh, lateral side of the rectus sheath okay um, so what happens each layer is muscular posterolaterally and aponeurotic anteriorly so these muscles when you go backward okay when you go backward towards the spinal area so uh, that's the area from where this muscle originates uh, not exactly from the spinal area but the muscles which are quadratus lumborum which is on the back of which is on the back uh, post or the posterior side of the abdominal wall uh, we have these muscles coming out from there which are muscular okay on the posterior side they are muscular these three muscles but on the anterior side you'll see they, they become aponeurotic okay that means they they transform into something else which is called aponeurosis on the anterior side before you know getting attached with the rectus abdominis muscle all right we'll have a look at these uh, things in more detail later but it's very important that you understand the diagram so you can see this rectus abdominis muscle you can see the rectus sheath okay which is the aponeurotic end of these three muscles okay which are external oblique internal oblique and transversus abdominis okay then we'll talk about these layers as well, which is the transversalis fascia and the parietal peritoneum. Okay, the parietal peritoneum, not the visceral peritoneum, parietal peritoneum. Okay, so as the as the names of the muscles were mentioned, uh, muscles were mentioned: external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis. Then we have this transversalis fascia in green that you can see, and we have this parietal peritoneum. Again, this picture very similar uh, you can have a look uh, again you have these muscles external internal and transversalis uh, transversus abdominis then you have this uh, transversalis fascia and the parietal peritoneum but you can see this difference you know this difference you can see here this aponeurosis which is the rectus sheath is splitting from the center splitting and dividing into one and a half at the top and one and a half at the bottom all right so this is the posterior side this is the anterior side okay so on this side there will be skin and in this side there will be abdominal cavity now you can see the difference in these two pictures on uh, in this one you see this rectus sheath splitting equally but in this one you see all the three layers of the aponeurosis are going on the front okay going on in the front of the rectus um, abdominis muscle now this is very important to remember why does this happen and these are direct questions which can come in exam now you have to remember that this splitting equal distribution of the rectus sheath occurs above the arcuate line okay which is uh, somewhere below the umbilical area so on the upper side you see uh, on the uh, on the you know on the layer on the level above the arcuate line you see them, them splitting equally but below that you can see that all are going on the front so we can remember it this way in high society there is equal distribution so on the higher side of the abdominal wall 
there is equal distribution of the rectus sheath while on the lower side of the in the lower uh, level of the abdominal wall or on the lower side of the abdominal wall we see that all the three layers uh, or, or, or the entire rectus sheath going in front of the rectus abdominis muscle all right they are not dividing so inequality so that's how you can remember high society equal distribution low society not equal distribution and everyone tries to go uh, on the front okay so that's what's happening this is something very important to remember now we talked about two muscles which were rectus abdominis this muscle right we're talking in the horizontal cut section now let's look at this way uh, this is the rectus abdominis muscle which is coming out of the ribs you can see and they're going and attaching to the pubic bone uh, a quadratus lumborum you can again see that how it's starting this quadratus lumborum muscle how it's starting and uh, attaching to the pubic bone and starting from the rib and uh, other uh, you know uh, the part of the vertebral bones we'll talk about these in details later now uh, again let's have a look at the muscles of the abdominal wall we just talked about these two muscles rectus abdominis which is on the front and the quadratus lumborum which is on the back but apart from that we have these three muscles which are kind of uh, you know surrounding the abdomen external oblique which is at the top external as the name suggests it will be on the external side of the abdominal wall internal it is just below the external oblique and transverse abdomen it is it is the innermost uh, muscle in the abdominal wall now external oblique uh, you can see that it lies superficially like we talked originates from 5th to 12 ribs okay 5 to 12 ribs you have to remember this there's no choice you can look at the picture just to remember but you have to remember it originates from the 5th uh, to 12 ribs we'll have a look at the picture later now so it originates that means it comes out from 5th to 12 ribs and insertion it inserts into the anterior half of the outer aspect of the iliac crest okay let me show you the picture of the iliac crest and the some parts some important parts of the pubic bone so that it's easier to remember okay so you can have a look at this iliac crest this is the crest okay uh, this is the iliac bone so let's have a look at the insertion it insert inserts into the anterior half of the outer aspect of the iliac crest okay so anterior half this is the anterior side okay and the anterior half of the iliac crest will be uh, inserting external oblique all right uh, inserts into the anterior half of the outer aspect of the iliac crest linea alba and pubic tubercle so these are the insertion pubic tubercle uh, linea alba okay we have seen linea alba before this is the linea alba right so we have these three insertions for external oblique more medially and superiorly to the arcuate line the aponeurotic layer overlaps the rectus abdominis muscle okay so um, the lower border forms the inguinal ligament okay now you have to know this where does the inguinal, inguinal ligament come from? External oblique. The lower border of the external oblique gives rise to inguinal ligament. We have more complexity in this structure. We'll read about it later. But just for your basic knowledge, you should know that external oblique, the lower border of the external oblique actually gives rise to inguinal ligament. Uh, the triangular expansion of the medial end of the inguinal ligament is the lacunal, lacunal ligament. Okay, so. You, the triangular expansion of the medial end of the inguinal ligament is the lacunal ligament. So this is the what the, this is the one we are talking about. You can have a look. So this is the external oblique muscle. All right. So you, this cut part is the external oblique, and you can see that its lower border is forming the inguinal ligament. All right, and it becomes it, it gives this triangular expansion, which is kind of lacunar uh, lacunal ligament. All right. So we'll read about these structures later again because these are very, very important structures. All those structures around the inguinal ligament and are, you know, uh, forming and giving rise to inguinal ligament. All right. Now then, let's have a look at the internal oblique. 
you have very very important external oblique you look, you, if you look at the fibers of the external oblique they are coming in a very um, a pocket in the hand kind of angle you, you look at these fibers muscle fibers the, it's it's like you're putting the hand in your pocket this is these are your fingers and it's in your pocket so this is the uh, angulation of the fibers in which it comes so it comes downwards medially and anteriorly okay downwards medially and anteriorly and while it's opposite for the internal oblique you can see it's going downward uh, external oblique is coming downward anteriorly and um, downward anteriorly and medially whereas you can see the internal oblique the angle of the internal oblique fibers they are going upward medially and upward medially right upward and medially anteriorly obviously so this is the difference you can notice okay all right so if you know the angle of the muscle fibers of the external oblique you will definitely know, know about the internal oblique because external oblique is like fingers going in the pocket uh, kind of uh, direction whereas in internal oblique it's opposite okay now let, let's look at the internal oblique it arises from the thoracolumbar fascia okay thoraco thorax lumbar thoracolumbar fascia uh, the anterior two-third of the iliac crest okay we saw the iliac crest and this comes out from the anterior two-third all right so anterior two-third of the iliac crest um, and the lateral two-third of the inguinal ligament so we have seen inguinal ligament and it comes out from the anterior two-third of the iliac crest and lateral one-third of the inguinal ligament so inguinal ligament is somewhere here right if you look at the real inguinal ligament in this picture so it comes out from the lateral one-third of the inguinal ligament for internal oblique muscle okay so internal muscle uh, oblique muscle internal oblique muscle comes from the thoracolumbar fascia the anterior two-third of the iliac crest and the lateral two-third I'm sorry not one-third lateral two-third of the inguinal ligament okay like we talked about the direction of the internal oblique and the muscle sweeps upwards to insert into the cartilages of the lower third ribs now there is a good difference here you have to notice external oblique we noticed that it was coming it was originating from fifth and twelve ribs okay while it was inserting on the lower side which is the iliac crest right the um, it was inserting into the iliac crest on the lower side right linea alba and pubic tubercle but here in internal oblique you can notice that it's originating yeah arises from the thoracolumbar fascia and the entire two-third of the iliac crest iliac crest is on the lower side right in uh, i mean it's on the lower side of the muscular um, at the level it's on the lower level right compared to the ribs so it's starting from the lower side you know it's starting from the lower uh, side which is the iliac crest and the lateral two-third of the inguinal ligament and it, go, it goes up and inserts into the cartilages of the lower three ribs okay lower three lip ribs it inserts into the ribs whereas in external oblique it's inserting into the iliac crest linea alba and pubic tubercle while it's originating from the ribs whereas in internal oblique it's originating from the uh, iliac crest inguinal ligament and the thoracolumbar fascia but it's inserting into the ribs okay that's an important difference that you should remember the lower fibers form an aponeurosis that runs from the 10th coastal cartilage to the body of the pubis. All right, so that's how it goes. And the innermost muscle, transversus abdominis, okay, arises from the inner aspect of the coastal cartilages to the of the lower six ribs and from the anterior two third of the iliac crest and lateral one third of the inguinal ligament. So you can see these structures are very, very important. Uh, they're all. Uh, Again, this transversus abdomen is there. It's uh, originating from the coastal cartilages of the lower six ribs. Okay. Uh, so coastal cartilages are basically those soft cartilage kind of structure, which is um, uh, beside the sternum, which is attaching to the sternum. Okay, so those coastal cartilages, the lower six ribs and the anterior two third of the iliac crest and lateral one third of the inguinal ligament. You know the inguinal ligament by now. So. And again, uh, the fibers run horizontally, like 
you can see in the picture the fibers are running horizontally you can see the fibers right they're running horizontally for transverse it's a dominus muscle okay now the rectus abdominis lies medially running from the pubic crest and symphysis to insert into the xiphoid process okay xiphoid process is the lowermost part of the sternum and the fifth sixth and seventh coastal cartilages like i told you the coastal cartilage is that cartilage tissue which is present between the rib and the sternum sternum so that's what it is the muscles lie in aponeurosis is described more now nerve supply you have to know the nerve supply of transversus abdomen it is supplied by t7 to t12 thoracic outflow okay anterior primary rami of t7 to t12 so the coming out from the anterior root from the spinal and the spinal nerves coming out of the thoracic outflow t7 to t12 then now let's look at one structure uh, very important from examples point of view campus fascia and scarpus fascia now these are part of the superficial fascia okay superficial fascia which mostly contains fats right and uh, you can see the campers is at the top the superficial uh, layer among these two is the campers fascia and then comes the scarpus fascia how to remember cs if you know the game counter strike cs so c comes first and s comes later if you go from uh, outer side towards inside so cs and also alphabetically c comes first and s comes later so that's how you can remember campers is above scarpus fascia and that's important to remember okay now uh, linea alba linea alba that means line uh, this line is called linea alba all right linea alba and this is the aponeurosis of the internal oblique okay and uh, anterior superior iliac spine okay let's quickly review these structures uh, so this is the sternum you can see this is the coastal cartilage we were talking about the coastal cartilages okay uh, you can see the external oblique muscle the finger in the pocket kind of uh, inclination of the direction of the muscle right rectus abdominis this is the muscle we talked about in the beginning the which is present in the anterior side of the abdominal wall a uh, tendinous intersection you can see these tendons right uh, then you can see can you identify this muscle yeah obviously uh, internal oblique you can see the fibers right and uh, uh, right so this is the arcuate line we were talking about okay arcuate line linea alba okay then we have this pyramidal muscle not so important but just to know that again very quickly with this structure you can have a look uh, what's happening um, so let's go from uh, this is the posterior side of the abdominal um, wall right and this is the anterior side we can see this is linea alba rectus abdominis um, we can see the campus fascia then we have scarpus fascia which is below the campus fascia right you can see the skin at the top then we have aponeurosis of the three muscles external oblique internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle okay then below that we have uh, transverse cilis fascia after that we have um, parietal peritoneum okay and uh, you can see at the back uh, the muscles um, how they are aligned and we'll talk about this later again we'll see you in the next video